So in this video, we're gonna go through a neurological examination of the lower body. So the first thing we wanna do is look at gait. We want to watch the speed, the symmetry, the balance and the arm swing of the patient as they're walking in a relaxed manner. Walking on the tiptoes is going to give us the ability to see whether they can perform plantar flexion strength to a good level. We can also check dorsiflexion strength by getting them to do heel walking, a very quick way to test some of the nerve roots in the lower limb. Then what we can do to challenge their balance is to get them to do things like tandem walking, so walking with one foot in front of the other which will have a look at cerebellar function. We can also do standing with eyes closed plus this in a tandem position. Moving on to general inspection, we want to look at any abnormal postures, any scars, any wasting of muscles, involuntary movements, fasciculations, tremor, and whether the patient has any other obvious abnormalities. So then we're going to do some sensation testing just with a cotton wool bud or something that with, for, for light touch. We're going to put the dermatomes up on the screen and you'd be looking at right versus left and you would be looking at whether the patient feels a significant difference. So Kate, I'm gonna um, brush you lightly and this is what it feels like. So you would basically let the patient know what it feels like. So this is what it feels like. And you could do this on a more proximal point. So up at the sternum, just so that the patient knows what it feels like. And then you would say, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to let me know if you feel a difference from right to left. And then you would basically just brush right versus left or right, left versus right. Does it feel the same or different? Same. Right versus left. Get same or different? Same. Right versus left, 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 same or different? Same. And you'd be looking at a dermatomal pattern. We can do that same thing with a neuro tip. So we're looking at sharp and blunt. And then you're just saying, close your eyes for me and tell me if this is sharp or blunt. Sharp. Sharp or blunt. Sharp or blunt. Sharp. Sharp or blunt. Sharp. And then you can compare right versus left. Obviously you can work through the full dermatomes, which I'm gonna put onto the um, screen. What you can also do with this is if someone's getting less sensation distally, then you can check whereabouts they start to lose their sensation and then you can look for like sock um, distribution in terms of a lack of sensation. The one thing you can do as well for sensation testing is look at vibration sense using a 128 hertz tuning fork. So again we would just go distally and ask the patient whether they can feel that or not and then can you feel it stopping and you'd see whether they could or couldn't sense that feeling. Okay, so for our myotomal testing, we're gonna come bring the patient's leg into 90-90 position and to test um, L1, L2, we're gonna look at hip flexion. So literally gonna ask the patient to maintain your leg there, okay, and don't let me push you down. And we're just gonna press and relax. And we're looking for whether there's a break we're looking for whether there's pain and whether they can uh, achieve that position, maintain that position. So that'd be L1, L2. Then if we go for L3, L4, which is knee extension. So okay, hold the leg there, don't let me push you down. We're gonna push down on the shin. It's good, and relax. Again, we're looking for pain and weakness. Then if we come down and look at ankle dorsiflexion for L4. So if you bring your foot up towards you, Kate, hold there. I like to um, have one hand around the calcaneus, one hand on the um, dorsum of the foot, and then if you hold there, don't let me push you down. And relax, good. And if you bring the big toe up towards you, holding the big toe there, don't let me push you down. And that's looking at L5, so that's L5 nerve root. Then for S1, you could have done this at the same time, just for the purposes of going through the nerves, I'm gonna run through it like this, but you could do this at the same time that you do the knee extension. So this would be more your S1. So again, hold there, don't even push your leg up. And then relax, it's good. So with all these, we're looking at strength and whether there's weakness there, and that would be your myotomal testing. 
You can look for pain as well and looking at whether it's true weakness or whether there's pain inhibition which is stopping them from doing that movement. I think sometimes when you get really acute pain and acute back pain, you this will be weak and it will test weak but it might not be necessarily because there's true um, nerve damage causing that muscle weakness, more just because the person gets pain when they do it. But again, you can, you can usually see whether there's that myotoma weakness and then you would then compare one side versus the other side. For S1, S2, we look at plantar flexion of the foot, so you can look at calf raises, and the easiest way to do that is in standing and doing a single leg calf raise. Okay, so for our reflex testing of our L3-4, we will look at patella tendon uh, jerk. So patient in sitting, and you're literally gonna find that patella tendon, and then simply hitting onto the tendon and looking for that, that reflex. You could do this also in lying as well with the patient's leg on your leg, but this is quite a nice position where the patient should feel fairly relaxed. Then we're gonna go on to the ankle jerk reflex. So for the ankle jerk reflex L5S1, we're gonna bring the knee into just a slightly abducted and then slightly flexed position. We're gonna create a little bit of dorsiflexion through the ankle, and then we're just gonna tap on the Achilles tendon, and we're looking for that plantar response and that would be a uh, positive sign for this test. For our upper motor neurone lesion signs, we've got our Babinski test. So for this, you'd use the uh, back of a um, reflex hammer. There's a sharp point on there. And then you would basically get the patient to relax and you would draw the reflex hammer up and across. And what we're looking for with this is a fanning of the toes. So an upward uh, response and fanning of the toes, which would indicate a upper motor neurone lesion. Again, you'd compare one side versus the other side, and I'll get a close up of this so that you can see this test. So the clonus test is another upper motor neurone lesion test. And what we would do is um, hold the ankle. We're gonna passively dorsiflex the ankle in a rapid manner with a bit of force. And we're gonna look for a plantar flexion tapping of the foot or re um, repeated movements into plantar flexion. So we're literally gonna push up in a forceful manner. And then what I'm gonna do as well on the video, I'll put a example of a positive clonus test for you and what you'd be expecting. So the other motor neuron lesion sign that you can do is called Hoffman's test. And for this one, it's an upper body test, but can be quite useful in the lower body as well, just to rule out certain conditions. So what we would do for this one is we would hold the middle finger at the D, uh, distal um, PIP joint. And what we're gonna do is flick the nail in a downward fashion. And we're gonna be looking at the index and thumb to see whether there's a reflex with those two um, digits to come together. So it's a positive test if you find that the index and the thumb are getting closer together. I'll also put a close up of this test on the video so that you can see a positive, uh, positive test. So one cerebellar test that you can do for coordination is where you get the patient to tap against my hand. So you're gonna tap your foot against my hand repeatedly. That's good, you both at the same time. That's good. And that way you can look at the coordination. The other thing that you can do, you can do this in a variety of positions. We'll do it in lying, but you can also do it in sitting as well. It would be, okay, if you can take your right heel and slide it from your down your shin and then back up your shin. That's it. Just do it again. Okay, now repeat that on the other side. We're looking for the coordination and the ability for someone to do this. It's good and relax with coordination and that's gonna signify if they can do that, that, they've got good cerebellar function. Again, you can do that in sitting as well. So okay, if you come into sitting, Perfect. And then other side. So again, we're looking for whether the person can coordinate that movement. It's good. Perfect and relax. And we want to be doing that on both sides, basically. So good test to use for cerebellar function. 
So with probe reception testing, you can also do a, a distal um, PIP probe reception test where you would hold, just making sure with this test you hold to the side and not in this position so that you can't give anything away. And then you would look to um, get the patient to close their eyes and then you would basically move the foot up or big toe up or move the big toe down, ask the patient, does that feel up or down? And then you would move down and say up or down. So we're, we're asking the patient to be able to sense where their joint is in space. And that gives us an idea of how good that proprioception is. Before you go, check out one of these two videos that I know you will like. Like this video, subscribe, and I will see you next time.